Well, it was an amazing historic chapter here in the South Florida UCF rivalry in softball as UCF sweeps the doubleheader from South Florida and denies the Bulls a chance to win the regular season title as the Knights win it 4-3 to three in a classic in Game 1 and then run rolls them in Game 2, 9-1. to one. We will have the recap and the highlights of that after a word from Orlando Health. When Ellis's active lifestyle was threatened by a knee injury, he worried his athletic days were over. Today, Ellis is back to his very best. I'm Ellis, and I choose Orlando Health. Eric Lopez here alongside Jamie Lowprice, and what a day for the Knights. A doubleheader coming into the day, South Florida two wins away from the regular season title, but the Knights' defense much sharper today than they were yesterday, Jamie. Much sharper, and the small ball was really the name of the game for, for UCF. They get the run early on a squeeze play there by Shannon Doherty against Georgina Corrick in game one as the Knights led 1-0. Jasmine Esparza had a big doubleheader, hits a double here as the Knights had second and third early in the game. And then Shannon Doherty here with a sack fly, Cody scoring from third. Yeah, we saw some untraditional things happen. A ball not hit deep at all, but challenges the arm of the defense, draws the throw, and gets a key run. Knights led two to nothing, but the Bulls would come back and respond, as you would expect. Kendall Williams with a solo homer off Gianna Mancha, got it to a two to one ball game. And then the Bulls, Williams again with a big two RBI double here in the fifth inning to tie the game, two two scoring Johns. And then would take the lead here on the wild pitch by Mancha's Anna Marie Bruni would score from third. And lead three to two with Georgina Corrick in the circle. But the Knights would rally in the bottom of the seventh with one out, Elise Volpe with a big double. Elise Volpe was clutch all day, moving into that leadoff spot, a big one out hit. And then the wild pitch by Corrick allows Volpe to score from third to tie the game at 3-3. And then the squeeze play call by Coach Bob Malone. Cody executes it as Denali Schapacher scores her 100th career run. What a time to do it as the Knights with a two-run bottom of the seventh. Knock off Corrick and the Bulls 4-3. First time that Georgina Corrick has lost a game where she's had a lead since the 2019 regionals. What a comeback for the Knights. Yeah, and I think it was a lineup change that set the tone at the top. They put a lot of speed up there, put the pressure, and they came through clutch with the, who would have thought, a walk-off squeeze play. So the Bulls were two outs away from getting the second win. Now all of a sudden you get a game two. A Knights win would eliminate the Bulls from the regular season title. But the Bulls would come out ready early, as you see the air there by Jensen. But then the throw here, a steal for Bruni but nothing would go there for the Bulls offense. But here defensively, South Florida was ready early. Great play by Williams, robbing Ornelas. But again, this double play by South Florida defensively kept them in the game early. Yeah, and USF had to go pitcher by committee in this. You see Aaliyah White right there. She did her job all game, only giving up one hit, keeping the keeping them close. A throw, Aaron throw by Cody allows the Bulls to get on the board first in the third to lead one nothing. But the Knights can go back to small ball. It was Volpe once again at the small ball, followed up right next by Schottpacher. She gets on there as the Knights offense comes to life. Jasmine Esparza with the two RBI single in the third inning, scoring two runs that would give the Knights a two to one lead. That was the 16th double of the year for Esparza, ties the school record, and that would be all that Leah White would need, but the offense would give her more. Farkowski was big. We didn't talk about her enough, but she was big clutch hits to get the offense going. And then Takia London with a three-run homer to break the game open. The senior from Chiefland, Florida, gives the Knights a 6-1 to one lead. And the celebration was on as it was only a matter of time as Volpe once again involved in the play and watch the moves from Justine Molina. I, I don't know if I've ever seen this. And to be safe, stops on a dime, jukes the catcher, safe at home. That made it 7-1 to one in the fifth inning. And then a base hit to the right side by Juliana Wilson. Drives in, a, drives in a run to make it eight to one. And then on the wild pitch, Elise Volpe slides in and scores to give the Knights a nine to one win, a run roll victory and a sweep of the double header from the Bulls and deny them a chance to win the regular season title. Aaliyah White in what could be her last start at the UCF softball complex, a one hitter and denies her rivals of a regular season title. Yeah, if you're not going to win it, I guess the next best thing to do is to keep your rivals from winning it on your home field. Great performance today by White. She got the defense support that she needed, and clearly she got the run support a today. A memorable 95th career win for Aaliyah White. A memorable day and night for this UCF team as they sweep the Bulls in the doubleheader. 
Their most wins as a team since 2016. Final game at the UCF Softball Complex on Sunday at noon. We'll have it on ESPN Plus. But until then, for Jamie Lowprice, I'm Eric Lopez. This has been your Orlando Health Recap.